Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to walk you through a hobby project that I made for a friend of mine a, about a year ago basically. And I hope that in this project I can kind of illustrate the key things that I think are important to remember when we make a distinction between hobby level programming or amateur level programming and professional grade software development. So just as a disclaimer, this project is by no means like a reference or anything like that. I'm not saying that you should write things this way. It's just a a one of many projects that I've built over the time I've been a programmer and it is basically just something that I threw together in order to accommodate that like, to accomplish a certain goal. And hopefully we can touch on some of my thought processes around this project and why it actually looks the way it does. So let's get into it. So first and foremost we have this application here which is basically a bunch of well it's just a flow of images. You have this little side menu here where you can like go in and you can see some schedules and well you can go and look at some rules which is you know it's basically just a burger club and as you can see here are a few members guess who this is and finally we actually have the events themselves where we have some graphs here to do some basic ratings the stuff of this nature so we can like grade the different restaurants that this little burger club has visited and then we have pictures from the event itself and each of them have a little bit of grading with like in well basically what people thought about the place we went to and so on and so on and so on and so on and yeah that's that this is basically the entire application it's uh, not much else going on there but anywho so this product, like this entire application, is basically the thought child of one of the guys that I know. And so he comes to me and he says, Frederick, I would really like you to put up a website, right? And the first thing, and this goes out to anybody out there who is actually a professional grade software developer, and especially to the juniors, because of what you might, you might may think now is that, okay, cool, my friend came to me, he wants me to build something for him. The first thing I thought about when I had this request, and this is a mistake that I made back in the day, and because I've been working for a while now, I didn't make that mistake twice. So, I used to have the idea, okay, he wants me to build him something. That means that now I should go into professional grade software development mode and I will build him a work of art. I will build him the best damn thing that I can. And the thing is that I've done that mistake, I made that mistake enough to know that that is not the right way to go about it. So instead of actually making any assumptions or trying to lead him, because that's the one of the biggest mistakes that you can make. When a customer comes to you, do not like, just listen. Just listen to the request and try to figure out how to accommodate their needs as opposed to trying to give your own input too early. Because if you give input too early, you are very likely going to lead the customer or the person who is asking you for something into requesting or uh, getting more than they're actually looking for. Because this website, as you can see, it's fairly simple. And that's all they needed. I mean, I am like, if I were to present this to my boss, so I was saying, I, you know, this is not a professional grade software like project. It's not at the scale or at the level of uh, quality that would be needed in order for me to make a full fledged business off of this. But I'm not trying to make a business. I'm trying to make a small little website for a group of maybe 20 people who go and eat burgers a few times a year. And the, like uh, he was, I, it was actually funny. Even though to me this is not the sort of the, this is not this like uh, th this does not really meet my personal pride uh, measurements. It's not really something that I would proudly present to you know an employer as a CV and say, hey, this is me. You've been working for a few years. I made this amazing thing, right? Because you know, on at the professional scale, this is not simply not good enough for a lot of higher end jobs. It's still something that very, very well fit with my friend and the guys who are part of this little club. They were really, really happy with it, even though the project itself from a technical perspective is fairly simple. And, you know, the design and so forth is also very simple. 
it didn't need to be more complex than that. So let's actually walk through like the actual product itself. I mean, there are tons of mistakes and corners that I can, things that I've done here that I'm not super proud of and things that could be improved. But I will touch on as to like, actually why I haven't even bothered trying to fix it and why I didn't actually go for, you know, something more advanced than this and just a bit of reasoning behind it. So your first question is of course going to be which framework am I using? Well, none. This entire application is just a static file. Like it's, or it could have been completely static. I actually do have rendering support for this, which is just something that I added in because I thought I was going to need it. I set it up and then it turns out that, hey, I could make this project even simpler by just hard coding everything. So I didn't actually have to have any rendering. I could move that and just remove it all together. But as you can see here, there is like no framework. Like I had this little dependency here to C C3 just to draw some graphs because I don't didn't want to go through the hassle. I mean, I don't have to make a custom graph library to give my friend, which all he wanted was to have some way of seeing, okay, what did we vote for? And like, what, what, what stats are we generating? And that's about it, really. And then I have a bunch of plugins here. I mean, I am. I mean, I'm on Webpack three as well. I don't even. I didn't even bother to upgrade this. This is a year old. And here we have some of my scripts. Like you can see here, things that basically I just hacked together as quickly as possible. Some I did actually go one further. I could have made this even simpler, but I did actually do a little bit of profiling and stuff and do some type of some things that may be considered more advanced and I will talk I will actually touch on as well why I did that and why I did this thing instead of just trying to clean up in other areas. So yeah and as you can see there are no tests no nothing like that because hey this is uh, this I think the total time I spent on this product was eight hours maybe total and that means designing the whole thing getting requirements and setting everything up deploying this is running on Heroku and so forth so it's not a lot of work all things considered but let's just walk through so first and foremost we have our webpack configuration and I have my plugins here and we have two entry points which is going to be the main JS and the burgers and the reason why I have made that split is because the main application is going to contain basically all the JavaScript that you see on the landing page and whatever little JavaScript I actually have on the other pages, but the heavy lifting is actually happening on the burger side where you can probably suspect that, you know, and I was scrolling through with all those graphs and all those images, that's the page that's going to be heavy. So I want to fork off all of that and just keep that page as a separate entity because I don't want to have to load a bunch of stuff uh, on the landing page up front. I want to be have that sp separated. And here's my output where we basically just check if we are in production mode. If we are in production mode, we're actually going to use a shunk cache, a shunk cache and then we otherwise we're just going to use a local named file for like generating the bundle. And here are my rules. I basically just have one for CSS loading. And the reason why I do CSS loading like this is basically because I was lazy. I just felt that this was probably being were going to be the fastest way for me to set all this up. I'll just have Webpack handle all of this stuff and do as much as possible through Webpack. The reason why is because I know that this project will never progress to the sort of size that would be needed for this to become a performance issue. I did actually turn out to be a little bit wrong about one of those things because there's a slight delay to this that I could improve on and that has to do with this. It didn't actually have with, to do with CSS but it has to do with my file loader plugin, which I piped through a WebP loader. And basically all this is going to do is that it's going to grab all the images that I'm importing into the project and can convert it from whatever format it is in into WebP format and with a quality, fairly high quality. And this is just to say, because that's the thing that I was optimizing for here. The thing that I knew was going to happen was that this project is going to completely or be oriented around adding new sections to the burger page, which is going to be just a long flow of images with graphs in these JavaScript graphs made in C3. And I also knew that that's the only page that's most likely going to change long term on this project at all. And I've been, and this has turned out to be completely right. 
I, the, I have not updated a single thing on this project apart from a very special section, uh, the specific section we're going to look at later. And I'll, and that's kind of the way that I've reasoned about this. That's why I don't actually put in, to, in more energy into optimizing this because I so very rarely have to fix with, uh, fiddle around with it. And then we use common chunks plugin so we can break out our wenders into a specific chunk and then we have our runtime chunk. I mean I don't I'm not going to go into what all of this means if you are unfamiliar with it because this video is more about showing how a like a hobby project something that is very quick and dirty can look and some of the considerations you should, you can have on you know how this project can actually because the thing is um, you may not agree but I actually argue that Although this project is fairly ugly by professional standards, it's actually perf a per fairly perfect fit for the intended use case. And as I said, the intended use case, I mean, barely anybody uses this website and it's almost, it's only, it really only exists because a friend of mine thought it was going to be important. I mean, and today, I mean, a year later, the, the website itself has almost never been used or produced much in terms of value. I don't even think that I'm getting, I haven't gotten a request to update this, even though the, some, a lot of the information is outdated, as you can see. And that's exactly what I predicted when I was working on this. I, I knew from the start, based on the person that I was talking to and the request, that this project is going to be a one-shot, one-fire one type of deal. It's going to be built and it just needs to look fairly decent and do the things that this person wants. And once I have this up and running, I'm most likely never going to change it again. Or if I'm going to change it, it's going to be very rarely and it's going to be in a very specific section because uh, the person who made the order is not a company, a growing company with like changing requests. It's a single human, like it's just a single person for a very small organization. Anywho, I also added a little bit of a, th this thing here, which is the HTML Webpack plugin, because I needed to abstract this away a little bit. So what I wanted to do here was basically to generate my JavaScript files, and I wanted to inject them into my template files, because I wanted to be able to render out the different pages on, on the application that we could visit, you know, the different links. But I also, of course, want, you want to have like an automated way of adding the script tags into the page itself. And these script tags are actually hashed, as you could see in production. So I didn't want to have him do that manually so I added this little plugin here which does this for me basically where I can use a ES, EGS compile loader which is basically just going to be a preprocessor for uh, allow my HTML webpack plugin to handle instead of just doing static HTML it's going to be able to parse EGS which is a rendered file format and yeah and then I basically just added in all of the different routes that I wanted to generate. So here's my little server. It's fairly small EC the PC and here are here is the entire application well all the server side code pretty much. All it does is as you can see here it's basically just doing a bit of compression. I mean even this compression I mean in a production environment in, in compressing you doing compression in a node.js application is probably not the most efficient thing to do at least not in at large scale but once again doesn't really matter this is a hobby level project and then we have some static asset uploading or static certain file serving I set my views directory set my view rendering engine to EGS and as you can see here I mean even the rendering is completely it's fairly pointless I said and this is something you know if I had done this all over again I would have even just removed the rendering part because I actually did it turned out that I didn't actually need to even support rendering it could just have been static files but I do have rendering so the way that it works now is that these files here are generated files that are deriv derived from the templates. So let's just walk in, let's look at like the main landing page here. So you see now I have inlined, like this is the HTML document and you can see here that the style tag here just has a bunch of styles. And this is basically just inlining all of this is, instead of having a CSS file, I basically just inlined everything into the head of the document. The reason why I wanted to do that is because I wanted to have the fastest loading experience possible and I was standing in this situation where okay I could 
just I could split out you know the critical parts and you do the critical CSS thing and if I were to do that I mean that would work but considering how small this application is there wasn't really a reason for me to have a specific like a page a a style sheet to do this I could just inline it into the head directly and gain those benefits right off the bat because it's such we're talking about such a small page and with the compression on top of that the HTML that's going to be going to be sent over the wire is going to be very very small so I didn't really need to get fancier than this kind of nice when things can be a little bit old school and then it just basically renders out this template here and just to illustrate at the bottom here you will see that this is the thing that the loader was doing so it's going to inject these script tags with my different scripts into the page and that's exciting that that's the entire thing the actual templates that I'm actually using are here so this is basically all the markup right here with well I'm including a my headers and I'm including a men menu I have a few partials that I just add into the page and everything else is pretty much static nothing super advanced going on so here are all my partials now why do I have so many partials well that has to do with this section here and this is the in the, in the sweet spot of the whole application right here so my assumption when I start went into this project was that my friend is going to tell me that he wants all of these different things and I'm going to just assume that because I I know him well enough I know that he is going to have high you know large dreams he's going to want a lot of stuff I give him the things that I think he's going to need up front and then I simply try to predict the thing that is going to be the most valued feature and in this little application the only feature that should matter is each event in other words I want to have a very easy and like low maintenance way to just add new sections to that main page that shows all the images from people going to the different meetups right and that's the this exact structure here I knew that this was the important part and this is the only page that I have changed as notice that it says five months here guys this is the only page virtually that I have to touch whenever there's a new update because this is a very manual process for me I didn't like the meetup only happens a few times a year there's no reason for me to create like an administrative system or anything like that to allow my per my friend to do it himself because the time I had would have to spend to build a platform that works for the for just so that he can upload whatever he wants is going to be a lot longer than it takes to me to just add like basically copy paste one of these sections modify it with a few images and slap that right in here and it's going to be done I mean every meetup when I actually um, have a request to update this website it takes me maybe say 20 minutes tops for depending on how many images we're talking about here to update this and yeah so basically I have all these different sections here which are these partials which are just it's basically just copy paste from each of the sections because remember I'm I'm not trying to make this a sustainable thing I'm not trying to make this something that is going to be extensible or be able to grow it's just something that I just know that if we were to ever make this into something more serious I would have to do something a little bit I mean this project wouldn't scale to like an enterprise level and not that that's the case anyway like that's not the desire anyway so here is the header as you can see it's just included with all this stuff hard-coded there's no it's not intended to be extensible and here is my menu which is included on each page as well and some more of these like just included different sections so it's very convenient for me whenever there's a new meetup all I do is that I copy paste a previous section and then I simply change the file name and include it just as I've done with the others and that's about it really here are some other partials that are you know just included so that's my entire workflow for this all I have to do is to copy paste a previous one a previous meetup template and add it in and then just do this again easy peasy there's very little in terms of maintenance uh, or work that goes into, into to doing this it's very convenient cool and we'll add it when it comes to actually looking at the JavaScript itself, we can have a look at this section, well, the public assets, it's me at least. So basically the flow is usually that my friend, he goes and he gives me, a, he sends me an email 
with all of the images that he wants to be uploaded and basically the rating of how that burger meetup went and that's my this is my section for that basically I have all these images here in one big massive super file these are all the static assets and that's where that loader plugin comes into play so as you saw earlier all I do which is very convenient for me as well uh, again all I have to do is this thing here I add the images that I want I just require them directly from this directory here and thanks to the pl plugin that I have in Webpack it's going to con like convert it into a slightly more optimized format and just produce uh, the image as part of my bundles which is exactly what I want and this one this section here is fairly straightforward this is the thing that is going to be updated most of the time and this is as you can imagine these uh, hopefully you, uh, you can see is just each of the images that are part of each of the sections after each meetup so whenever there's a new meetup all I do is that hey I get these images he wants them to be added and I simply append them to this file takes five minutes to do and I just have to include them in this directory and it's going to automatically optimize everything and like just improve it uh, improve the images and add them into the to the rest of the flow. So very little changes code-wise that I have to do. And when it comes to selectors, I have a few things that I've done here like selector utilities which is just, I don't like, a little bit of premature optimization here if I'm completely honest but it's, hey, I just need, I did this over and over and I thought, hey, I'll save some time. Don't really know why I did that but hey. And here's my menu grabbing the JS selector and then basically grabbing the menu button on the page and then I'm just creating a menu click like a click catcher which is basically this thing here you click that button here this section comes out and then I can click outside and it closes the whole thing again right and do, 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 what else yeah no that's not it's not much more that's going on here small little thing we can actually look at the images as well so here we have a few things so the thing that I've done here is that I've added a very basic lazy loading functionality to the page because as you can imagine if I now refresh let's go to the top of this page here I refresh this page and I start scrolling downwards you'll see that some of the images are not actually there they're being lazy loaded in or well as I start scrolling down and the only the, basically this is the code that's handling that so all it's gonna do is that it's going to well it's going to basically just grab the attributes uh, the, the attribute data source and add it in set it as the attribute attribute instead and if we go back and have a little bit of a look just here at the bird you're, you see here that like I've added just these source the, like custom attributes with the actual image into these different images. Same thing here. And that's exactly what this code is now hooking into. All it's doing is that it's grabbing that attribute and setting the source attribute on the image instead so that I can actually, you know, just load everything in. And then I add a few styles here to just toggle some CSS when like the image has actually been loaded so you can actually see that it kind of fades in uh, in a smooth way because what, remember the thing I'm going for here is to optimize the time it takes for me to add things in and the experience of the, for the person who's starting the page it's this is not a sophisticated application so the only thing I really have to focus on is to make it load really quickly and make the actual scrolling experience pleasant because this is the page that most of the users are actually going to go to they're just going to want to see the pictures and like remember about that time they were at that burger place or this burger place and so forth and load on menu open and basically this is this little function here which is just going to well it's basically lazy loading all over again that's all it's gonna do and load on scroll which is basically okay so I didn't you the user started scrolling and all I'm gonna do is very similar to as you saw earlier I it's just going to start and grab the data source attributes and set them to source and it's going to do that on the load images uh, well that's about it really or rather on scroll nothing super fancy anywho finally we have the thing that is probably it's one of the other things that takes up 
any type of time when I'm uh, maintaining this project and that is the actual graphs. We saw, as you see, these graphs are just added to each section and basically the way that this works is like this. It's very similar to uh, to the strategy that I have for each of the sections, adding each section with images and each of these graphs. So basically I just have to require create a new configuration of all these templates here. We can actually look at them. Each of these templates are just it's just a well a function that takes in some information about how like what uh, to actually output in the chart. And I just copy paste each section with new information and that's all I have to do. There's nothing more to it and the short config is just this configuration which is predefined which I just tested and made sure that it works with the C3 library and then it just takes in the specifics of each of the like the things that I need to have to be part of uh, that specific meetup section and then I just require all of these different library uh, these uh, sections and then yeah we basically have a on scroll listener that is just going to check if the user has scrolled and then it's just going to remove it so like basically just as soon as you scroll it's going to fire off this and then it's just going to remove the on scroll listener because it doesn't have to fire it anymore and then we're just going to generate all of these sections so in total i need to make changes in two places whenever there's a new meetup i need to sh add a section here and i need to add a section in my markup or like the EGS file that you, we saw earlier. And the same thing goes here for CSS. I'm doing a little bit of lazy loading with my style sheets as well, which mm, is probably, it's basically just loading in the C3 CSS uh, in a lazy fashion and uh, just to save, get, squeeze even a little bit more performance. So overall, this project isn't really, well, it's fairly simple in of like the the application is very simple and the code isn't all that nice but with this i have achieved the two things that i was after i have achieved the very low maintenance that i wanted because i knew from the start that my friend is going to have me to make make all these updates and therefore i want to optimize for my own you know my own time spent sustaining this project so that was number one the second thing was that i didn't want to overcomplicate it because i knew that this project is most likely going to have like it's going to be used for a few months and then it's going to be forgotten about which is pretty much the case here as you can see considering how few times i've actually updated this and then finally i wanted to update uh, optimize for performance so i ran the my lighthouse uh, audit tool which you can find in the chrome in chrome and basically the audit is looking pretty good it's uh, i have a few remarks on performance and a few other things and best practices but i'm aware of these so example here is the biggest thing i have here is that i don't have properly properly sized images now why don't i really care so much about that well because once again i'm trying to optimize for my own workload and I know or that my friend isn't going to care all that much about properly sized images and so forth as long as the load time is fairly good. So that's basically why I haven't cared so much about properly sizing the images because he basically just takes pictures with him and his friends and you know when I'm hanging out with them as well we're just taking pictures with different phones and then they're just sending all of those pictures completely unmodified they're not optimized they're not intended to be cropped or anything like that just for the specific page it's just a bunch of random images right so with that little plugin that I use I can get some improvements to my images uh, without any work and that's why I give so this is something that I'm perfectly fine with having in a production environment with already predetermined like predefined images which I know is going to be a certain dimension and so forth I might have put more work into it but I don't have to because hey my overall metrics are looking pretty good and then I have a few other things that I could improve, like HTTPS. I don't really care about HTTPS for this project because, once again, there's no real reason to, to do so. And yeah, so this is basically a walkthrough to, through a hobby level project. And although these things are a little bit more advanced, talking about lazy loading and trying to figure out performance improvements and so forth, this is the sort of project that you will find, you know, to be 
some of the I mean introduction to programming like these are projects that are at a junior I would say at the junior level I mean you don't have to do everything that I did but these are very simple straightforward project and what I want you to take away from this is that not every piece of software that you write has to be super advanced super performant Google level or Facebook level uh, sophistication you know it doesn't have to be a super application every time you sit down and build something the thing that you should really think about is what is the right decision for this project for this project which is going to be a almost nothing project where just getting the site up quickly having it load fairly fast and being straightforward and to maintain that is the most important part it doesn't have to be more sophisticated than that so next time you sit down and you're going to sit and you build something think about what's right for the project instead of just trying to immediately go for the most advanced solution that you can think of have a great day